Um, hi everyone, I'm Chuck Stapleton. I'm an advanced application engineer for 3D systems and I focus on the dental market. I'm going to talk to you today about some of the unique features uh, that distinguish us from uh, the competition regarding the Nextent 5100 and 3D systems as a whole. So Menopot will go more into the materials and applications, but I do just want to point out that we support the full portfolio of Nextent resins. So that's all 30 resins and that's very unique to the Nextent 5100. All right, now you can't talk about the 5100 without talking about figure four technology and what, what is at its core, okay? So it's a DLP system uh, that uses a platform. You can see there's a platform on the top. The parts pull up out of that resin as they're being printed. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the specific technology, but this is what it looks like inside the machine without the cover on. All right, so this part, just keep this in mind. Uh, when I show you some diagrams, we're printing the, uh, the Eiffel Tower. It's just going to be printed upside down, just so you know what you're looking at. All right, so this is the basis of a DLP system, and traditional DLP systems I'll talk about first. So there's a platform on the top that's sort of pulling this Eiffel Tower object out of a resin tub. On the bottom of that resin tub is a glass plate. Uh, below that is a projector that's projecting up through that glass plate. So what happens in a DLP system is the resin is cured with a projector, to that glass plate, and then the platform moves up a little bit. When that platform moves up, there's adhesion to the glass, so it has to be very gentle, it has to pull it up very slowly, and then it can go back down and cure the next layer. So it does this over and over and over again to produce the part. What's unique about figure four is that it does not use a glass plate on the bottom. It uses an oxygen permeable membrane. So what that means is there's a very thin layer of oxygen uh, just above the membrane on the bottom of the resin tray. So the liquid is actually floating. So what you gain with that is there's no adhesion. When you cure that first layer on the bottom, it's not sticking to anything because it's floating on a layer of oxygen. It can immediately pull up and cure the next layer, pull up, cure the next layer, and do that very quickly. That's how we can achieve the very fast print times uh, with the next N5100. Now, figure four originally started as a production system, so high volume production. And this is a, an automated manufacturing cell. So you can see there's about 16 units in here, 16 figure four engines in there, and there's a gantry that travels along the top, and it picks up the trays, puts them in the post-wash, post-curing, and then finally produces the, the end part. Uh, these things can produce millions of parts per year. So the same technology that runs in these machines also runs in the next N5100. So you've taken that same platform, same Z stage, same membrane, same projector, and put it in a much smaller package. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the hardware, um, some of the, the unique details and features that we have here. So um, we'll go from the top, working our way down. Uh, starting with the, the print platform, the tray, so what the part sticks to as it comes out. So one nice thing about this is we don't use any clamping system. You don't have to use two hands to operate it. So I can open the machine. It's all magnetic driven. I can take off the print platform with one hand. I can put it back on and close it. So if I'm holding a bottle, I'm holding parts, whatever it might be, I only have to use one hand and worry about you know, putting a glove on that one hand as well. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have a resin tray on the bottom. So let me take a step back here on my slides. Um, so along the bottom here, we have a, a resin tray that can be easily swapped. So if you're printing a denture material and you need to swap to a crown and bridge material or a denture tooth material, uh, you can do that within a matter of seconds. So it's a quick clamp, you push it, it pops out, um, and you switch your material. Uh, and lastly, we have a catch tray to avoid damaging the projector. So uh, DLP systems, if resin gets on the projector, the whole system is ruined. So we've designed inside of here, and it's, it's easy to remove. I won't, I won't do it right now. But uh, it's a system such that if any resin does spill over, if somebody's pouring it and they accidentally you know, pour all over the machine, uh, we have a system to make sure that no resin does get onto the projector and, and does uh, allow the device to, con device to continue to be used. Okay, so moving on to the touch screen. I'm really excited about this part because I think it's a, a unique, uh, unique, I don't know, position with the machine. So uh, we have a touch screen. We don't use hardware buttons uh, because if you spill resin on hardware buttons, it gets inside the machine, they stick. Uh, if it cures, it makes it difficult to use and can actually ruin the machine. So we've tested the touch screen with uh, one layer of gloves, two, layer, two layers of gloves. If you have resin on your finger, it still fully functions. Uh, so that, that was one of the most important things. 
Uh, next on that is we provide very simple instructions for use. So you can see we have a checklist up there. If you throw a printer operator at it, they can just follow step by step on what they need to accomplish. In this case, you know, making sure things are clean, filling the resin tray, all that, before they start their print job. Uh, and then very clear indicators when you are printing. So in this case, you know, this is showing the status of a print job. And then when the print job is finished, uh, there's a nice big checkbox over there. So if you're across the room, you can see what's going on. Uh, in addition to that, we have an indicator light. So this particular unit uh, isn't plugged in right now, but uh, there is an orange light inside so that when the job does finish, it sits there and flashes so you can spot it very easily. Okay, this job's done, I need to run over and swap out. Uh, some other things, multi-language support. So slightly important in North America, but much more important globally. Uh, your printer operators you know, may not be uh, able to read English and everything. So we need to make sure that we support multiple languages globally. Now, material quality guarantee. So this is related to the touchscreen device. Uh, there's a small barcode scanner on the bottom, and this is why it protrudes out a little bit. So just on the bottom of the machine, there's a barcode scanner right here. And what happens is when you send a print job to the machine, you scan the bottle of ma the material that you're using, and that verifies a few things. One, it gives us regulatory traceability. So the FDA is uh, scrutinizing CAD CAM production more and more, and along with that comes traceability from manufacturer, distributor, uh, down to the uh, consumer. And so you need to be able to track material lot numbers for the job to, to the patient. So that comes automatically with the system. Uh, in addition to that, it ensures that what you're sending to the job is actually using the right material. So for those of you that have CAD CAM mills, you, know, you can send a job to the, to the milling machine and select the wrong zirconia puck, and then you've completely you know, killed your machine. Uh, in this case, the worst that happens is you, um, you, know, you use the wrong material. But with our system in place, uh, that doesn't happen. So you scan the barcode, it says this does not match the same material that your uh, printer designer had sent to the machine. Uh, and then lastly, reducing stocking issues. So I've experienced this where you get a new technology and it has some consumable component and then you're using it for a little bit and one of your technicians or somebody runs up and says, hey, we ran out of material, we need more tomorrow. Um, because you're just not used to how to stock for this particular product. So then you're rushing and scrambling, going to your distributor, figuring out how you can overnight some material. Uh, because this is all connected to the cloud, your partner or distributor can actually see how much material you have left. And if they notice that you're running low, they can contact you and say, you know, hey, we noticed that you're running out of your MFH material. Do you want to have some more so you don't you know, completely run out and you're not scrambling tomorrow? All right, and then the bottom portion, uh, it's very portable. So if you do need to rearrange your, your lab or clinic, you can easily move this around. Uh, in addition, it has some storage on the bottom so you can put bottles in there and, <clears throat> and the various cleaning tools. All right, so let's talk about software. And this is the software that actually drives the machine. So 3D Sprint for 3D systems drives all of our plastics printers. So it's not limited to just dental, uh, but along with that, we get to leverage everything that they do uh, in other markets. All right, so this includes, uh, we can load any type of 3D file, uh, we can do repairs on it, which I'll touch on in a second, and you can run multiple machines from a single license of 3D Sprint. So in this case, there's something like 16 machines hooked up in that particular screen. So from one, one workstation, you can send jobs out. You can have multiple workstations connected and see the uh, different queues that are currently running on your equipment. All right, so I'll talk about the software a little bit. Uh, sometimes, um, I'm sorry, Runa, CAD software isn't perfect when it exports the data, especially if it's a new feature or something like that. Uh, so we have features within the software to fix that, fix that information. So if you have... Um, issues with intersecting triangles, tunnels, things like that, they can cause problems when you 3D print. So they can cause delamination, whatever it might be. So we have a very simple tool in the software where you load up the file and it will actually tell you there's a problem with this, it won't print correctly, uh, it'll display all the issues that are there and you just click fix and the problem's fixed and it's ready to go to print. In addition to that, we have all the standard tools for uh, orienting parts and placing them on the platform, generating supports. Uh, one thing I do want you to notice is the size of the supports used here. So other systems, you know, they're, they're very thick supports. You need pliers, you need a knife, something like that to cut it off. On these supports, you can wipe these off with your finger. Uh, and if there is anything left over, it's just a quick rag wheel, maybe 10 seconds, and it's completely polished. So it's a big time-saving feature, and you don't damage the parts. And then lastly is auto nesting. So if you load in quite a bit, in this case, three denture arches and I don't know how many crowns, uh, it'll auto nest the parts for you so you don't have to spend time sitting there placing everything. 
And then lastly is continuous updates. So this goes for the 3D Sprint software as well as the software that runs on the printer. Uh, we're continuous getting feedback. We're pushing out updates. Again, because the printer is connected up to the cloud, we can push down updates to resolve issues for you. Uh, because it's a touchscreen device, we can change the UI if needed, so we aren't locked into these hardware buttons. If there's some sort of workflow or something that's better, uh, we can optimize that. And integrations. So we are working on or have integrated uh, with several companies out there, uh, with, with working with uh, Three Shape, trying to get that in place. And the goal here is to make the workflow as simple as possible. So you go from your CAD software to 3D printing with the click of a button. You don't have to sit here and export an SDL file and then load something else in and reorient and all that. So we want to make the workflow as simple as we can. And 3D Connect. So this is the last software feature that I'll talk about. Uh, 3D Connect. The printer has quite a few sensors on it. So it's reading things like power output or torque of the z-axis, whatever it might be. Uh, all that information is useful. So if we're, um, and, and all that information is actually reported up to our 3D Connect system. So again, the, the system's connected up to the cloud. And the goal here is that we can actually use deep learning or machine learning to start predicting maintenance on the machine. So I don't know if any of you have seen the, uh, there's an IBM commercial where uh, an elevator repair tech shows up to a building. And he's like, um, hey, I'm here to repair the elevator. And the security guard says, our elevator's not broken. He's like, well, Watson told me to come here. And then Watson says, this elevator's predicted to fail within a week, and we ordered a technician to come out and fix it. So that's what we're trying to achieve here, is that we can detect certain patterns in the equipment. We can know if a failure is going to happen or if something's even going wrong with the equipment. Uh, in addition to that, uh, our support team can pull up this information. So if you call in and you say, hey, I have a print failure, something's going wrong, they can look at the information and see what's going on with your particular piece of equipment to help you diagnose that issue much faster. All right, so kind of relays or um, segues into support here. So again, not machine related, but something I think distinguishes us from uh, the competition out there. So we want to make sure that you are never down, that you're always up and running, that you're always printing. Uh, and our goal is within 48 hours. So wherever you are in the world, either a distributor will come out to you or we will cross ship a machine to you such that we ship one out, you pack up the old one and ship it back to us. Uh, depending on the scenario, we may be able to turn that into a 24 hour window. You know, if you call us in the morning on a Monday, we can have a machine to you by Tuesday. Um, if you call us late on a Monday, then it'll probably arrive on a, on a Wednesday. Uh, and then also our reseller network. So we're going to have a, a little bit of discretion on who we hire uh, to distribute our, our equipment. So um, the, the map on the right there, I, I chose that one because it just shows a few dots for each region. And this is because we don't want to have everybody out there selling our piece of equipment. Uh, we're going to scrutinize. We have criteria that we want people to go through. Uh, the most important is they have to have experience in dental CAD CAM support and training. That, that is above everything else. Uh, in addition to that, they need to have some regulatory systems in place. So again, you know, that's becoming more and more important, especially since we're producing medical devices with this machine that go directly into the patient's mouth. Um, and like I said, you know, they, they must have an existing dental focus. So we are not taking non-dental partners or resellers and trying to cram them into dental. All right, pre-release testing. So this goes along the lines of the, uh, the service and support a little bit. So by the time the product ships, we will have completed almost a year of testing in the field. And I think that that gives us a, uh, a very unique advantage of that we're not just taking a product that's been made for something else and throwing it out there. We're actually putting this in dental labs, in different production environments, in clean environments, dirty environments, uh, in, in hot weather environments, cold weather, humid, not humid, whatever it might be. And we're testing all of those scenarios. Uh, we're also getting continuous feedback about the usability of the product. And we're not limiting it to just the US. So this test is going on globally, or this pre-release is going on globally. So one of the items that I want to show that was from our, uh, our feedback was you can see the pedestal on the bottom with the legs there. Uh, when you try and stack the machines next to each other, at least with the original design, there was a, a lot of space in there. And on the production floor, space is at a premium. So what we did was we went back and we redesigned the pedestal so that you can stack these machines closer together. So again, you, know, you don't have to have a ton of space if you're going to be running four or five of these machines. They can compact down into the space of about three of them. Um, so this is just an example, uh, one of many, where we take that feedback from our pre-release testing and we incorporate it uh, into the product. 
All right, so just a few quotes here from some of the people that do have our systems. Uh, so this is from Chris at, uh, at DPS. Uh, I, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but uh, the key takeaway here is that running multiple materials throughout the day. So whatever the application is, if you're running casting, if you're running dentures, uh, if you're running crowns, you can quickly swap materials and continue your printing uh, with a single machine. All right, uh, so this is Danzo Dental Lab. Uh, they are a uh, small to mid-sized dental lab down in, uh, down in San Diego. They were sending out their uh, digital model production because they didn't necessarily have the, uh, the ability to purchase a, a machine that could handle the workload they were getting. Uh, by, by doing their printing in-house, they were able to reduce their cost by 90% for what they were paying. And this just emphasizes, you know, from a small, medium-sized lab up to larger operations uh, like a DPS, this, uh, it's a very versatile piece of equipment. And then lastly, this is from Cordent uh, over in the Netherlands, and they like the combination of the printer and materials, right, so that they have so much variety that we support all 30 resins. All right, so I, I really like this slide. Uh, <laughs> so we installed this at one of our pre-release sites, and for those of you that know, uh, this is a lava form mill. Uh, so this was one of the catalysts, I would say, for the, the CAD CAM or the digital dentistry revolution in the space. Um, they sold a complete package, scanner, software mill, all of that. And so when we came in, this was sitting in a corner collecting dust, but that's where they wanted the, uh, they wanted the printer to be positioned in that area because they had some room. Um, I thought this was great because it just sort of showcases, you know, where, where things started from and where they're headed to. And I, I don't know, I, I really like this photo. All right, and then lastly, I'll talk about the application support team. And this one, to me, is that being part of the application support team is also very important. Uh, everybody that's on the application support team, we've either grown up in a dental lab, we've worked at the bench, we've ran a dental lab from small operations up to you know, multi-hundred technician operations. So we know what that's like. We know what it's like to, to work in the lab. We know what it's like to have that pressure where it's a Thursday night or it's a Sunday night and the doctor needs that case Friday morning because the patient is going to a wedding or something like that, right? It's always, it's always they're going to a wedding someplace across the globe and you have to get them that case. So we know what that's like. We know that the product has to work maybe 99.9% .9 of the time or if there's a problem that you can rework it very quickly. So, um, you know, I think versus our, uh, our competitors out there, we have a lot of dental lab experience. And this goes directly into the development of the product and the resins as well. All right, so to talk about the resins and materials, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let Menno, my colleague Menno Pot come up here. <laughs> 